Hey, travel fans, welcome or welcome back to RTE Travel Talk, Ask a Real Travel Expert, the show that talks to travel professionals around the world. Today, we're taking a look at Holland America lines. You know, sometimes the real measure of a cruise line is how well they respond when things don't go exactly as planned. If you enjoy this journey with us today, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so you'll never miss an episode. And if the video's got you inspired, give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out. We'd also love to have you join the conversation. Drop a comment below about your experience, ask a question, request a future topic or interviewee. We welcome all comments and suggestions. Thanks for being part of our travel community, whether you're a longtime fan or just dropping by. We really appreciate it. Let's keep exploring together. And now, on with the show. Today, we're diving into a topic that every cruiser should know about. What happens when things don't go quite as planned on your cruise? To help us navigate this, we're joined by travel expert Brenda Case of Travel Planning by Brenda, who has deep experience with Holland America. Hi, Brenda. Welcome back to RTE Travel Talk. Hi, Ken. It's great to be here. Great to have you with us, Brenda. So, Brenda, one thing I wanted to talk to you today about is something that's been on the minds of pretty much every person that cruises. We really don't talk about it a whole lot, but I think perhaps it's a good thing for folks to know. And that's basically cruises are fantastic. But what happens yeah. if something kind of goes off the rails or, you know, something goes wrong on the cruise? Now, each individual cruise line handles things a little bit differently, but there is one in particular that you pointed out that it's kind of top of your list for how well they stand up when it, when things go wrong, and that's Holland America. So I was kind of hoping today that we could spend a little time talking over about just how Holland America handles things as a means to giving people some kind of an idea just exactly what can they'll, they can expect when things go wrong on a cruise. How's that sound? That sounds great. I Perfect. think Holland does a great job, and I'd love to talk about it. That's great. Let's get right into it. As you and I both know, Holland America is known for its impeccable service, but they're yes. also really known for standing up when things go wrong. Absolutely. What's your yeah, what's your overall impression of how they handle unexpected hiccups and issues? You know, I think they're one of the better lines with that. I think they do a great job of communicating. I think one of the things that frustrates people is the lack of communication when things go wrong. Yeah. And I think as a passenger we tend to forget that there's thousands of other passengers that they also have to, you know, be accommodating to. There's also a lot of moving parts that they have to put together before they have anything to communicate to us. So I think it's important to remember to take a breath and they want you to have the best time ever also. They're not doing anything to try to keep you from having a good time. Exactly, exactly. Uh, we recently, actually over the summer, we did an Alaska cruise tour which, as you know, I love Alaska. I go as often as I can. And this year we decided to do the cruise tour and get a little farther inland because that was important to us. So we just did a little three day cruise, which I love cruising. I could stay on the cruise ship forever if I could afford it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but on this particular cruise, we left Vancouver. We had a day at sea. We went to Juneau, had a great day. We overnighted in Skagway. And then we were, you know, we got off the ship in Skagway. We stayed at Holland America's hotel, which is another thing I want to just point out real quick, Ken, is one of the reasons I think they do such a great job is because they own so much of their own equipment and accommodations and in alaska yeah no for sure yes absolutely yeah. but we just happened to be there when they had the big landslide so our original plan was to leave skagway get on the train get up to whitehorse uh, overnight there you know all of those things we got up the next morning we had all our bags already had already headed ahead of us so we didn't have luggage any longer and they said you know we've had a little bit of a hiccup we're still working out the details, but we don't want you guys to worry about it. So we're going to put you on this great train ride, which we made it almost to the Canadian border and then turned around. So we had about a two hour train ride that was beautiful. And by the time we got back, they had their plan in place. We all had a, a couple hours in Skagway and then we went and we took a ferry from Skagway to Haines. A lot of us were grumbling, myself included, because I really had been looking forward to that train ride. and. Then I started thinking about it. And one of the things that 
column did for us that there were several other lines in Ford at the same time. I don't think they got quite as lucky because they own all their own equipment and because they had other people on the other side that had already started the tour, they had buses on both sides. Right. So they were able to ferry us to Haynes, which looking back at it, that's not a place that a lot of people get to go when they go on a cruise. So it was something, if you really took time to look at it, it was kind of special, really. Yeah. But they also, in that short amount of time, put together 80 of the most exquisite boxed lunches I've ever seen. <laughs> and we had great lunches on our, what you know, once we got to Haynes, then we got on the bus. That was the hard part of it, I think, because... What it was supposed to be a leisurely night in Whitehorse ended up being a very long bus ride. Oh, I think we got to Whitehorse just before midnight. Nothing was open. No food was available. And it was pretty easy to fall into that of why are they doing this to me? And they really weren't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they really did everything they could to make us comfortable and to continue our travels without a big disruption. Yeah. From what I understand, there was at least one line that had to start sending people home at that point. That landslide thing, that's that's kind of a pretty major issue that they had to deal with. And it sounds like they, yeah. they handled it really well. What are some of the other common problems that can occur on a cruise that are t they would t typically have to address? It, well, you know, things happen like missed ports. They either can't get into the port because of weather or they change a port because there's too much congestion in the port. Again, they don't do these things to persecute you. They do them to try to make your trip a little better, actually. And they do a great job of flipping everything that goes with it. If yeah. And really, when it comes to like a weather-related issue or a missed port, at the end of the day, it's all about the safety of passengers. And Absolutely. It's that's, what they're, that's, what they're that's what they're going to do regardless yeah. for yeah. everybody. Absolutely. I hear it on both sides from travel agents and from travelers that say, well, they didn't let us know. Well, again, they're looking at contacting not only all of their internal part, but all of the passengers, all of the travel agents. They've got a lot of people to contact. So yeah. it, it takes a little bit of time. But you mentioned, you know, when it comes to something like this, like they know that a port's going to come up, that it may possibly be missed or there's a weather event. It's all about the communication. How do they handle the communication? You know, for us, of course, we were, at, by the time this happened, we were already on the tour portion. We were off the ship and we had a guided tour. So our person was there with, she had everything. She had all of the information about where we were going, how we were going to get there, where we needed to meet, and was very forthcoming with it. She also was very understanding that we were kind of upset about it. Yeah. <laughs> but again, you know, we have to mitigate our issues ourselves a little bit too. So we don't want to insist somebody does something that isn't safe for everybody else. So the safety of the passengers is something that every ship, no matter what the line is, that's their number one priority. And it sometimes gets lost in the mix. Tell me this, in all the 20 some years that I've been cruising, I've never had a cabin related or a stateroom related issue that's come up. But I know lots of other people that have had. How does Holland America respond to something like that? What, what's been your experience? I personally have also been very lucky and I've not had those issues. I, I've had a, a couple of times where, you know, the toilet didn't want to flush once, but it, you know, then picked up and did its thing. But on, on this particular Holland trip that we were on this summer, there was somebody that had some cabin issues in their bathroom, but they did everything they could to get them in a different cabin as quickly as possible. Now, again, that's one of those things that's kind of tough because people get upset because, oh, gee, I paid for a balcony with the extended balcony and I got a regular balcony. Yeah. Well, you have a bathroom now. So yeah. you, you've got to, sometimes you've got to take a little bit of that and, and understand that they're really, again, not doing it because they want you to have a bad trip. That That is not how they stay in business. No, no, exactly. And again, when, when, thing, when things crop up, folks have to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, really. You absolutely do. And like I said, and, you do have to mitigate yeah. your own and, issues a little bit. As you said, Holland America and and really any cruise line, they're, they're there to ensure that you have a good experience. Yes. And to do that, you know, 
sometimes things have to change a little bit. So when you get into that situation, yes, it's frustrating, but you oh, need to, yeah. you also need to take a step back and say, okay, are they doing everything they possibly can? And right. in 99.9% .9 of cases, yes, they are. And in Holland America's case, it's probably 110%. Exactly. Yeah. Holland America tends to, you know, when I think of them, I think of like white love service. They're just a step above in a lot of areas. Yeah. So anytime you know, something goes wrong, they just step up and they do what they can. Yeah. I know that rough seas is another issue that a lot of people get upset because, you know, the weather wasn't bad enough to keep them from getting to port, but maybe they missed a couple of hours of that port. And people tend to get really upset about that. And again, it's all in the name of safety. They really step up. And I've seen them do things like come over the intercom and say, you know, we're sorry that we're not going to be able to do whatever it is. Yeah. But meet us in this venue and have a drink on us. Now, a lot of us are buying the packages. We already have drinks. It's not that it's saving us a bunch of money, but it is a goodwill gesture that I think we need to keep that in mind, that they're, they're doing what they can. Exactly. What about health-related emergencies on board, Brenda? Again, I've been pretty fortunate. I've only ever been on one ship that they actually had to do a uh, an evacuation from. Yeah. But I have followed several that were done on Holland. And I think, you know, they're as good as any of them. They make sure that everybody's safe. They tend to evacuate decks. Like they don't want anybody up on those upper decks when the helicopters are coming in. And, and they let people know what's going on. So on, on that, you know, and in, they will come over the intercom. And most of the time when they do those announcements, you won't hear them in your stateroom unless it's an emergency announcement like that. And they will wake you up out of a dead sleep and let you know not to go up on those decks because this is going on. So I think they really do a good job. I've never had that happen on any other line. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yep. Now, one of the things that I think people love to complain about on cruise lines is, is the food in the dining service. You and I both know Holland America has amazing food and amazing yeah, dining good. service and have had for years. But, you know, you will run into people that, you know, have issues. How do you, how do they make adjustments for that? You know, they do whatever they can. I've seen people complain because the food was too bland. They'll do whatever they can to to add some spices to it. They really take that very seriously. And they're very good at, I, I think, again, all the cruise lines are good at making sure, do you have any dietary issues we need to be aware of? Uh, Holland really, I, I don't know how they remember it, but it's like, you tell one server and every server in that dining room knows and they take care of you. Yeah. I find in the, even in the buffet, they're very good at letting people know what's, you know, there's peanut sauce in this or there's gluten here. Really, really good at that. As far as complaints about flavor, that is so subjective. And to watch them do what they do to try to make it perfect for every person is simply amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, it truly is. Now, one thing that comes to mind as I recently just got off a three-week trip that had a lot of flights involved and a lot of lot of transferring of luggage, what happens with you arrive at your Holland America ship, you arrive, but your luggage doesn't? How do they handle that at the start of a cruise? Well, first off, you really hope that you listen to your travel advisor and you took out some insurance so that you can get some reimbursement from some of those clothing that you're going to need to replace. Yep. Holland, and I don't know if they're still doing this as much since COVID. They used to have a whole loaner closet. So if you got on board and you didn't have anything, you could literally go to the purser's desk and say, I need a formal gown. I need... And if they had it in your size, they'd give it to you to wear. Yeah. I don't know that they're doing that as much anymore, but I have seen them give people credit and send them to the sundry shops or the, you know, the shops on board and say, buy a few outfits. It's on us. You know, basically here's two or three hundred dollars. Go take care of it. So I have seen them do that. Yeah. I've not seen that on any other cruise line. So that was impressive. Is there such a thing as having your luggage arrive at the next port? Absolutely. And they will do everything they can to make that happen. Yeah. It, it, it's it's just one of those things that they can only get it to you once the airline finds yeah. it. And then it's a whole, I used to work for an airline too. So I know all the yeah. coordination that goes on kind of behind the scenes. And I know people get frustrated on that end too, but they'll do everything they can to make sure you have it as soon as you can in that trip. And generally it's by the next port. 
Yeah. Um, I've only yeah. ever known of one person that never got their luggage back. And I, it's been, I bet it's been 20 years and I don't think she's still got that luggage back. So. I'm always amazed by the, the amount of logistics involved in, in luggage. If you put it on a conveyor belt in one country and it disappears and then yeah. three countries later, yeah. it, it, it and and four or five airlines, it 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 magically shows up. It's amazing. And it's amazing how they how they can do that. How they possibly made that happen when you barely made the flight yourself? So to put a cap on it, if you show up at a Holland America cruise and your luggage doesn't show up, well, you got to get on the ship. It's going because the ship's going to sail. They'll That's help you out with with an onboard credit in some cases to to get you over a few outfits, and hopefully your luggage will catch up with you at the next port generally and of course you know that's not a hundred percent doesn't happen every single time yeah. but I, i'd say it happens more than it doesn't um i just think they do a really good job with that and the other the other tip for folks is make sure that the carry-on that you have with you has a couple of changes of clothes if you can if you can make that work a lot of people yes. in this day and age are just going carry on anyway and please 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 don't put your medication in checked luggage please keep that with you on your carry-on at all times yeah if you're carrying it on and they make you gate check that take that medication out and carry it on the plane with you yeah uh, just don't let it get away from you no for sure it's just not worth yeah. it. clothing you can replace easily medications yeah. in another country get to be really a logistical challenge yeah now we talked at the the start of the episode about what happened to you on that alaska cruise tour but mm -hmm. what happens if an ashore excursion like that is actually canceled how does how does holland america compensate or rebook guests well generally you'll just see a refund mm -hmm. on, the, on the excursion if it's a missed port due to a change of day they'll just flip it to another day if it's a missed port because they're just not going to make it to that port it's in the form of a refund. Okay. It can be, it can either be a straight refund or a onboard credit then. A lot of times it'll go to an onboard credit, yeah. but there's different kinds of onboard credit because you've got refundable and non-refundable onboard credit. Generally that kind of a credit will be a refundable credit. Yeah. So if you don't spend it on the ship, it's going to come back to you in six to eight weeks in a very nondescript envelope that you hope you don't throw away. So if you're expecting money from a cruise line, make sure you're looking at every piece of mail that comes in. Uh, but yeah, generally they're, they're pretty good about that. And yeah. it goes into a refundable onboard credit if it goes on to onboard credit. So what about transparency with Holland America? Like if they know something's about to happen, how do you find them for keeping their guests informed overall we actually felt like they did a great job again i didn't like what they were saying and it, it made me a little cranky but they were up front with it and said you know this is happening and this is what we're trying to do we'll let you know as soon as we have it worked out yeah so they were they were very upfront with us oh great um, i have been on lines that i kind of was left in the dark and wondering so i appreciated that a lot and finally when we think about holland america as compared to uh, some of the other cruise lines when it comes to handling these issues. Mm -hmm. Why would you recommend them despite the occasional hiccups? I, I think part of it is that transparency. I think they really go out of their way to make sure that guests are are happy and taken care of. I just think they kind of do a step above. Fantastic. Well, Brenda, this has been incredibly insightful. Is there anything else you might like to add about Hall of America before we wrap up? Just that I think if you haven't already tried them, you should give them a try and we'd love to help you get on one. Sounds good to me. So if folks wanted to reach out to you about a Hall of America cruise, how would they contact you? Well, they can give us a call at 970-261-0280. They can always email me. It's bcase at cruiseandtravelexperts.com. And my website, casefortravel.com, is always a great start. Fantastic, fantastic. I'll leave that contact information in the, in the description for those that might like to reach out. Sounds great, Ken. I appreciate it. <laughs> now, as always, since I like to live vicariously, through the travels of all these wonderful eight travel advisors I, I interview, I have to know where you're off to next. Ken, I'm going to Disney. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am. I'm actually going to Epilepsy Days at Disney next month. Oh. I've got a young grandson that suffers from a 
a rare form of epilepsy, and it's been quite challenging for all of us. So we're going to Disney. Oh, fantastic! I'm sure I'm sure they will have a fantastic time. Is it Disney World or or Disney? No, Disneyland this time. Disneyland. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be a wonderful time. With that, Brenda, I'm just going to wish you safe and happy travels on all your future cruises, vacations, and destinations. May the wind always be at your back, and I hope to see you on a Lido deck sometime soon. Thanks so much, Ken. You have a wonderful afternoon. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. And that about wraps it up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, Brenda Case of Travel Planning by Brenda. If you'd like to reach Brenda, I will leave her contact information in the description. If you'd like to reach out to us with a question or a suggestion for a future video, you can send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com, visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or simply leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoy this content, a like, share, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels.